Hello and welcome to Understanding Narcissists. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I would like to discuss um, emotional abuse and its relationship to narcissism. And in particular, why that's the domain that narcissists own and live in and operate in and why it's the only one that they can. That's not to say that narcissists can't be physically abusive. They can be and they often are uh, sporadically. Probably the men are more so, no, I'm not going to say that. I don't want to say that the men, men tend to be male narcissists uh, use physical abuse more than female narcissists. I'm not sure that that's true. When I think about it again, I doubt that it's true. Um, it really comes down to this being all they know, emotional abuse. It would seem logical to infer that because they were emotionally abused then they sort of carry on that tradition and pass it on by abusing their own victims to compensate to I don't want to say cope I'll say cope um, to really fortify themselves so that the world is livable so that they can live so that they can be halfway secure and comfortable in themselves why emotional abuse has to take place in order for me to do that I have to talk a little bit about the difference between emotional abuse and narcissistic behavior which is inherently emotionally abusive lately I feel like not just here um, in these videos but just in my emails and uh, other things I've been writing I feel like I sort of use emotional abuse and narcissism interchangeably and there are circumstances and contexts where it is fine to use them as synonyms. And of course, they're not actually the same thing at all. Um, narcissism is a set of characteristics, a condition, and something that is happening cognitively as a disorder. And emotional abuse is a behavior, uh, an activity, a social communication and way of relating to people. That puts it in too much of a positive light. A narcissist possesses all of the narcissistic characteristics or criteria and emotionally abuses everyone. They're not the only people that do that. Emotional abuse can take all different kinds of forms. Maybe I'll talk about that later. However, a narcissist always emotionally abuses people, you, They'll never stop doing so, and frankly, I think they are probably the single best example of emotional abuse that I know of. Because they're so refined and sophisticated at it, um, they have developed it into a quite a science, quite a art form of manipulating and hurting you. Why are they able to do that? Because emotional abuse is their medium of communication. 
that's the only thing they actually really can do. They are specialists at it. And so I would say as a disorder, you can't get better at emotional abuse than a narcissist, at emotional dysfunction. It is what makes them up. It is what made them in the first place. And because of many crucial things they are lacking uh, in their humanity, that I believe they're trying to compensate for in each and every little thing they do. I don't want to say actualize. Something like having a valuable identity or role in a social setting. That's what a narcissist wants and needs. They have to be valued or they will be discarded. That is their fear. And notice that's what they're doing with everyone else is devaluing them and then discarding them and keeping them in that sort of repetitive cycle in doing so. And the people who don't figure it out, it's extremely difficult to figure out even when you start to recognize the pattern. That is emotional abuse in its purest form. The complete disrespect, disregard, discounting of other people's feelings except their own. They value their own so highly. They don't really. They're, they're making it a priority. They're the only person that matters. But they, they don't actually say feel worthy or valuable. That's why they're doing it. And I'll, I'll always notice with abuse, too, that nothing actually fixes it until the insecurities are acknowledged and resolved and talked about. And due to the narcissist's upbringing and their entanglement in emotional abuse, in emotional dysfunction, in a dysfunctional world, their mind, those things stay unresolved. Their problems aren't getting fixed. I'm not saying that they can't be fixed. I don't know of a way. It's just that to really capture the depth of this emotional depravity in how emotional abuse is a way of life. It isn't something they just do on occasion. There are lots of abusive people. But narcissists, narcissists are the only ones I know of that do it not even on a regular basis. They do it all the time. It is completely fundamental to their existence. It's the only way they can communicate and relate. And you'll notice when they aren't doing it, real narcissists, when they aren't doing it, or because they aren't it's really because they won't be able to, usually for social reasons where it's just inappropriate. It is extremely difficult for them to do so. And they have to get right back on track and, and continue to do it because it is simply something that must be going on all the time so that they can bolster themselves. It's really that you can bolster them. None of the things I've said in this video are particularly new. It's just that in order to remain consistent, I don't want to get things too mixed up and muddy because it's already a complicated matter. And some of the nuances, even though they seem obvious in the relationship between narcissism and emotional abuse, while not synonymous, they are necessary. Uh, with each other. Well, in particular, specifically because narcissism requires emotional abuse. And in a sense, narcissism is emotional abuse. It is a type of it. It is an extreme form of it. That's probably how I would put it. Because it is absolutely ingrained and completely constructed from 
frankly, any definition of emotional abuse. That has to be going on. It has to be occurring. And sometimes that gets a little bit confusing because narcissists being a form of emotional abuse, well, I'll say uh, engaging in emotional abuse on such a regular basis as such a fundamental part of their, of their nature and being and relationship, not just with people, with the world, how they view everything. Um, it's, it is deeply personal. It is highly, as you would expect, emotional. Everything is emotional. And then the task, of course, is to conceal that. That's what they're always doing. But everything is emotional. Everything is a judgment of some kind of how valuable or dangerous it is to them. And then, therefore, how everybody else should view it. Because they want conformity. They want uniformity. And they are different, even though sometimes they're, they are synonymous. And I will be talking more about emotional abuse in the future. I've done a few videos on it, but um, as a sort of background knowledge, it might be something I'm, I've overlooked. And, I, and like most of the things I talk about, or at least what I try to do, is make these things universal. And emotional abuse is universal. Many different applications, many different environments, but like narcissism, there are a few... Um, sort of uniting principles that bring it all together and you can notice uh, throughout your own life and your daily life and it becomes extremely useful it has a lot of utility so I'll be talking more about that in the future anyway I hope you like this video like it if you do share it with uh, somebody you think might also like it comment in the comment section below uh, about what you think about this matter and particularly your experiences and what you've noticed and what you might want to add that I missed. I would like to hear it. I know others would like to hear it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting uh, this channel and myself. I am very grateful for your support. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the future uh, or what you would like me to cover or talk about uh, in this channel. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye.